goal of this lesson and the next lesson that we're doing is multiplying polynomials. So you'll see the same success criteria for the next lesson as well. But on this lesson, we're really just focusing on multiplying a monomial times a polynomial. So what's a monomial? One term. So that could be a variable, it could be a constant, it could be a number and a variable like put together. So basically just one term times a polynomial, right? So make sure that we're multiplying that monomial by every single term. So what you'll be tested on by the end of class today with your exit ticket is can you remove parentheses by distributing? Can you combine like terms? Can you use the product rule? And can you make sure that your answer is written in standard form? So the top two things, I'm hoping that you've gotten good at that since we've been doing that all year. It's the product rule and standard form that should be a little new. So I did record yesterday and I linked it in the slides just like I always do. So if you weren't here or if you weren't here on a different day, just find the day that you missed and make sure to watch the lesson and take notes. So you're still held accountable even when you're absent for the notes and whatever the assignment is. And of course, you're, you're gonna be tested on the same thing that everyone else is. So just make sure that you are staying on top of that. Today, you will have a good amount of time to work on your practice. So just evens or odds, I think is enough. But if you want to do more and see if you're right, go ahead. Um, what I'll also be doing is passing out your missing assignment report because in exactly seven days is when the deadline is for late work from the blue folder. So I'll pass that out so you can see what you're missing. It was accurate as of like fifth hour yesterday um, and you can get that taken care of. Um, I will check the practice today when you do your exit ticket. So not really worried about that. My last class was able to get it done. Already mentioned that. So we are doing the exit ticket today for the end. I encourage you to wait. Even though, know, yeah, I write the password on the board and it stays there all day. I encourage you to wait until after you check the key for your practice. So any questions? All right then. So remind me where we left off yesterday. What was the last problem we did? All right, so number nine, let me erase this stuff then. All right, so then we'll start with number 10 being a you try that. So go ahead and try number 10. Even if you weren't here yesterday, just do your best. Um, so remember to distribute the outside term to all the terms inside. And we'll go over it in about one minute. Let's see how far you got. So what is the first step when you multiply a monomial times a polynomial? Distribute. So then the outside term needs to be multiplied by all the inside terms. All right, the coefficients and numbers in front of the variable, just multiply them like normal. With the exponents, you need to use that product rule that we talked about. And I'll write it down again over here. So if you have x to the a times x to the b, oops, let me use that exponent. Then what do we do with the exponents? You add them. All right, so start with the coefficients. Three times one is. Three. And then x times x squared is x to the 
third power. So x to the one times x squared as the exponent. Yeah, x to the third. Um, then move, oh, sorry. We still have that y there. So what do I do with the y even though the first term doesn't have a y? Does it just disappear? Like, what do I do? You just put it with that term. So it's like having y times 1. Good. So now multiply it by the next term. So 3 times 1 again. Good. And it's positive. So put plus 3. x times x. And y times y. Good. All right. Last term. 3 times 1 for the coefficients. And then there's no other x, so what do I write? And then y times y squared is? Good. So then look at your answer. See if there's any like terms that we need to combine. There isn't. Um, and then make sure that it's written in standard form. So that's good practice for your test. It's a good jump point to be based on can you write your final answer in standard form. So look at it. Is it in standard form? Yes. It's an ABC order with a higher value exponent first. So like x cubed, x squared, x to the first. So we're good. Questions on number 10? I also had you try 13. So what's negative 7 times 9? Good. C cubed times C squared? C squared times C squared? D to the, D to the fourth. Good. So that's the first term. Now multiply it. By the second term in the parentheses, what's negative 7 times negative 4? And it's positive, so put plus 28. C cubed times C? Good. And D squared times D to the fifth. Good. All right, and then there's no like terms. It is written in standard form, so we're done that. Any questions? All right, so now let's see what it looks like when there might be other stuff involved. So like 15 and 16. Um, so if you look at 15 first, we have some multiplication going on here, number outside parentheses, and then we have some addition. If you're ever confused on what you need to do first, just remember that you need to follow your order of operations. So 10 does. Your parentheses, exponents, multiplication, division from left to right, addition, subtraction from left to right. So those are in like the same step. So what comes first in number 15, multiplying or addition? Oh. Multiplying. So you distribute that negative 2x. What do we get when we distribute? Negative 6x squared and then times negative 2x times negative 4. Uh, positive 8x. Positive so any questions about how we got that? All right, then. So all we did was distribute. Um, don't forget there's still a plus 7x here, so just bring that down. And before you just box that up and say that that's your answer, look for any like terms that you can combine. Are there any? What are they? So combine them. And remember, that's a different rule than like the product rule and stuff like that. When you just combine like terms, you just combine the coefficients. So what's 8 plus 7? Good. And then, yes, it is 15x. You don't change the variable or the exponents. You're just adding. Make sense? Bring down what was already there, the negative 6x squared. And that 15 is positive, right? So make sure it's plus 15x. 
Is it in standard form? Yes, and there's nothing else more that we can do to simplify, so we are finished with that one. Good question. Um, 16. So now we have multiplication here, subtraction here, multiplication over here. What comes first? Multiplying or subtraction? Multiplying. So we need to distribute and when you're multiplying or dividing, you always go like from left to right. So we're going to distribute that first. 5w times negative 7w. Negative 35. Uh, uh, w squared. W squared, good. And then 5w times 3. Good, and it's positive, so put plus 15w. And then we still have this. I could bring it down and then distribute, but I'll just go ahead and do that in this step. Just don't forget that you need to keep the sign that's in front of each term. So make sure when you're multiplying that you're multiplying a negative 2w. So what do we get from distributing that? Negative 6w and negative 2w times negative 9w squared. So uh, 13. Oh, oops, my bad. All right, sorry. Negative 2w times 13 is what? Negative 26w. Good catch there. And then negative 2w times negative 9w squared. Good. And I'm squeezing that in there, but it's there. So plus 18w2. So questions about that? All right. After distributing, what do you check for? Any like terms? Are there any? What are they? 15w and and what do those combine to give me? Negative 11w. Don't forget that negative. Um, does the w squared term have anything to combine with? All right, so let's bring it down. What about the w cubed term? So let's bring that down also. Now, am I finished? Should I box this up? What form should we practice writing our answers in? So again, standard form, and we should probably write this down somewhere in the margin. Standard form means that the letters are in ABC order. And then if there's multiple of the same letter, like there's multiple W's, then it goes in the higher order exponent. Higher exponent. All right, so which one should be written first? Good, and it's positive, so make sure it was positive here. Next would be good, and then last would be. Good. Now I can box this up and match my answer. So that is, um, oops, I didn't do that. All right, so now that's the answer written in standard form. And then just make sure if it's negative over here that it looks negative over here. So questions. Give you one to try on the back. So let's look at the back. All 
And then I'll just have you try number 18. And then we'll check it and then we'll do just the last problem on the note piece together. Number 18 was the one I had you try. So compare your final answer to theirs. So first step, I mean, look at all the operations that need to be done, but usually distributing when we did problem solving was always first. All right, so distribute. Six times two gives me a positive 12. X times X gives me X squared. All right, and then on to the next term. Six times negative three is negative 18, and then there's no other variable there, so just copy it over, x. All right, and then you have to distribute this negative five to all three terms inside that, inside those parentheses. So negative five times two is negative 10, and x squared. Negative five times a positive nine is a negative 45. So remember that it's a negative five that you're multiplying each time. That's like the big mistake that students make. So make sure you do that. And then the X of course, and then negative five times negative three is a positive 15. Look for any common terms. So X squared com combined with this X squared, 12 minus 10 is two. Don't change the variable or exponents for those. Um, then we have negative 18x with this negative 45x. Combine them, we get negative 63x. And then any constants go last. Any numbers without variables go last. All right, if it wasn't in standard form, you'd rearrange it to standard form where the x squared comes before the x to the first. So any questions about this one? Feeling good about it? All right, I know there was at least one geometric application problem on your test. So we'll look at that one next. That's the last problem on your notes. All right, I didn't see one for a trapezoid. Um, although you would just need the formula and it's the same process, so not that big of a deal. But I did see one for rectangles, so we'll look at this one. So it says find the area of a shaded region. And it's going to be a simplified expression. So it gives me dimensions of this big rectangle and this little rectangle. But overall, I just need the area for what's shaded. So what do I have to do? Do I need to find the area of both rectangles? Yes. And then what do I do with those areas? Subtract them. So you're going to need to find the area of the outside rectangle and then subtract the area of the inside rectangle. All right, because that would give me just a shaded area. And we wouldn't do it the other way around because then that wouldn't help me. Does that make sense? So then what's the formula for area of a rectangle? Length times width, also seen it as base times height, perfectly fine. Um, but then we know for the larger rectangle, it's six X times eight X minus one. So it would look like this, 6x times 8x minus 1. So this term times that term. And then we know we need to subtract from that the area of the inside rectangle. So how would that area look? Good. You could even write the 5x plus 3 term first and then the 2x, but just still remember that you have to distribute. Um, so I would probably actually just write this term first. All right, so this is what we have. This will give us our area. So any questions? 
All right, so then what do we need to do from here? Distribute. What do you get from distributing the 6x? 48x squared. And? Negative 6x. Good. So distributed, that's what we get. Then distribute the second set. And remember, it's a negative 2x that we're distributing. So negative 2x times 5x is what? Good. And then negative 2x times 3 is negative 6x. All right, check your answer. Are there any like terms that I can combine? What are they? Well, I heard two things which are both correct. I'd probably start with a higher value exponent first so that my answer can end up being in standard form. So what's 48x squared minus 10x squared? 38x squared, good. And then, yes, someone said this already. These are like terms as well. So let's negative 6x minus 6x. Negative 12x. All right. Um, so look at the expression. There's nothing more we can do to it. It's already written in standard form. So this will give you the area of the two of these. Questions, comments, concerns? All right, so then you have a good chunk of time to work on your 6-2 practice, just giving your odds. You can check the answers on the back wall as well. I'm going to have you take your, I just take it probably the last 10 minutes of class. Going to be problems. So, you have like 10, 20 minutes right now to work on your. 